The date was April 5th, 1955. It was on this day in the town of Kyosu, somewhere in the Aichi prefecture of Japan. A child was brought into the world. A baby is born every second of every minute of every hour of every day. This is a normal occurrence. However, this was a child who, unbeknownst to anyone, even his own parents, would change the world forever. This child was Akira Toriyama, and this was his life. From a young age, Akira Toriyama always loved to draw. In particular, he enjoyed drawing vehicles. When he was young, his father worked in a repair shop fixing motorbikes and automobiles, so it only made sense that the young Toriyama would gain a fondness for them. You could say this was a hobby that had been with him for as long as he could remember. And what only helped things was the wellspring of new entertainment that was beginning to take hold of Japan. At this point in time, Japan was right in the middle of a post-war economic miracle, the nation seeing a massive boom to many of its industries, one of its most notable being its entertainment industry. Not only was Japan importing popular Western media to its shores, but it was creating homegrown works of art as well. And one of the best examples of this is anime. Anime during the time of World War II was heavily influenced by the war, and more or less was created for the use of propaganda. After the war, however, artists and animators created works not with the intent of propaganda, but entertaining and capturing the imagination of the masses. And it was this combination of Western and Japanese media that opened the young Akira Toriyama's eyes. I was an avid anime watcher until I was about 10 when I moved to manga. I think I'm influenced by Osamu Tezuka and Walt Disney's works, which I watched during that time, such as Tetsuan Adam and 101 Dalmatians. Animation like this showed Toriyama the world of magic and creativity that art could offer, a world that the young boy yearned to be a part of. Art had been a hobby for him up to this point, but now it had become a full-blown passion. The young Toriyama would hone his skills throughout the years, now focusing on drawing the characters from his favorite films and TV shows. As he continued to draw, he gained more and more confidence in his craft until eventually it was just something that became second nature to him. After graduating high school, Toriyama would use these skills to land a job with an advertising agency in Nagoya. It was here that he would use these skills to design posters for various clients, and this kind of work was easy for Toriyama to pick up. However, it would be a lie to say that he enjoyed his job. He wasn't really a morning person and would often come in late for work, much to the ire of his employers. Along with this, he also wasn't particularly fond of dressing formally and would usually come to work in casual clothing. Toriyama in general was a fairly laid back guy who didn't really take to average work life. And so after three years of this, Toriyama would quit his job. The year was now 1977, and Akira Toriyama, now in his early 20s, was jobless and living with his parents. Naturally, without a job, this also meant that Toriyama didn't have any money, which led to him having to borrow money from his parents. This was, to say the least, not a very ideal situation. After I quit, my parents would tell me, don't go out. It's embarrassing. It couldn't be helped though, so I'd spend my time aimlessly reading comics at cafes. But eventually, I ran out of money for cigarettes. Needless to say, this was possibly Toriyama's lowest point in his life. Ironically, however, it was this moment that would prove to be the most vital for his future. One day, while reading an issue of Kodansha's weekly Shonen magazine in a coffee shop, Toriyama came across something interesting. Weekly Shonen Magazine was holding a contest for amateur artists to submit their work to the magazine. And it was here that Toriyama got the idea to test his skills as a manga artist. Though there was an issue with the timing. 
The deadline that was set for the contest was not feasible for Toriyama to meet. However, this didn't deter him in the slightest. Being an avid manga reader, Toriyama had options for where he could bring his talent. And this would lead him to eventually set his sights on another manga publisher, Weekly Shonen Jump. With a new goal in mind, Toriyama got to work on a short story that he could submit to the contest. This led to two entries, A Wawa World in 1977 and Mysterious Rain Jack in 1978. And despite his work, neither of these manga would win the contest. It seemed like everything was back to square one, though there was a glimmer of hope in the form of an editor who worked for Shonen Jump, Kazuhiko Torishima. Despite the failure of both stories, Torishima enjoyed them and saw potential in the young Toriyama. He encouraged him to continue writing stories, and with this encouragement, Toriyama was able to muster up the determination to submit another story, this story being Wonder Island. And it was with Wonder Island that the young Akira Toriyama would fail even worse. Wonder Island would come in last place in the Shonen Jump reader surveys. The audience hated it, and unfortunately, this was the same for Wonder Island's follow-up, Wonder Island 2. Toriyama was a great artist, but he didn't have a lot of experience writing a story, and this showed in both Wonder Island stories. Quite frankly, they were completely random and incoherent, and not helping things was Akira Toriyama's over-reliance on pop culture references. It was clear that he had many inspirations, but he wasn't able to take those inspirations and do something unique with them. And sadly, this caused his first published work to flounder in the eyes of the audience. And so, it was evident, Akira Toriyama would most likely need to find a new career. That is, if he wasn't incredibly stubborn. Whereas most people would have felt dejected and probably would have walked away, Toriyama couldn't bring himself to quit. He loved drawing, and he wanted to prove everyone wrong. He didn't have a lot of experience writing manga stories, but this didn't have to stop him. He could simply learn how to write better stories. And so, now more determined than ever, he would spend the next year writing story after story after story, facing rejection after rejection after rejection. And during this period of time, he would write around 500 pages worth of manga to submit to Shonen Jump. All of this hard work eventually culminating into Dr. Slump. Dr. Slump was Akira Toriyama's first breakout success. Like his previously submitted works, it was a comedy manga, this time revolving around the day-to-day -day life of Arale Noromaki, a little robot girl who lives with her creator, Senbei Noromaki, in Penguin Village. The series was similar in format to Toriyama's previous stories like Wonder Island, containing crude humor, puns, and pop culture references. However, Toriyama, after spending a year refining his skills, was able to realize exactly what it was that made a manga great. Characters. If you can have entertaining characters, the rest will take care of itself. And this is something that's recognized by some of the greatest manga authors to ever live. If you have effective characters in place, you will be undefeatable. Taken to the extreme, this means that compelling characters negate the need for story or setting. That's how incredibly important they are. Some mangaka will go as far to say that if you have characters, you have a manga. It's this understanding of writing entertaining characters that allowed Akira Toriyama to take something as simple as a collection of gags and turn it into something beloved. Dr. Slump soon became a popular series in Shonen Jump in its own right, to the point that it was even able to air a popular anime adaption that would run for about five years. Akira Toriyama had found his breakout hit, which is why it was a bit surprising that he would end the series in 1984, four years after it had debuted. Akira Toriyama never intended Dr. Slump to run for as long as it did. He planned to end the series six months after it had debuted, and this was telling of how Akira Toriyama viewed writing manga. He never naturally got fixated on a single premise or series, preferring to instead write an abundance of shorter one-off stories. And this was a mindset that made sense for him. It allowed him to flex his creative muscles and not get boxed into the rules or expectations of any one manga that he 
he was working on. It's only with Dr. Slump's surprising popularity that Akira Toriyama felt as though the series needed to go on as long as it did. However, he wanted to end the series eventually, and would only be allowed to do so by jump if he had a new story that he could replace Dr. Slump with immediately after it concluded. So with this in mind, Toriyama and his now editor, Torishima, would brainstorm a new manga that could take the place of his biggest creation at the time. And that manga was one you've probably heard of before. A little story by the name of Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball was born from Akira Toriyama's love for kung fu movies, something that Torishima had taken note of and suggested should be the focal point for his next manga. So with this in mind, as well as being inspired by the classic Chinese novel Journey to the West, Akira Toriyama would debut Dragon Ball on November 20th, 1984. However, Dragon Ball faced issues right out the gate. For one, it was a replacement for Dr. Slump, which at this point had been a consistently running beloved series in Shonen Jump, meaning that people were probably going to be naturally abrasive to this new series. Along with this, while it did have gag elements, Dragon Ball was more of an action-based adventure series, following Goku and his friends as they ventured out in search of the legendary Dragon Balls. And if you were to look at the currently running action series at the time, it wouldn't be hard to see that Dragon Ball was was distinctly different. It was notably very lighthearted and silly, especially its child protagonist, Son Goku. This, to put it rather mildly, was a critical break of standard that Shonen Jump readers at the time found a little jarring. And it was because of this that Dragon Ball would kind of fumble out the gate, struggling to keep a consistent audience during its early chapters. However, this would all change when Toriyama would bring a major shift to the stories in its second story arc. When I had designed Goku's character, the words that best represented him were, I want to become strong. So I thought I'd bring that to the front. Even during Dr. Slump, many events and tournament-like things such as the Penguin Village Grand Prix had been amazingly popular. So I'd simply make the story into a tournament format. From there, the World Martial Arts Tournament was born. I temporarily withdrew the other characters besides Goku, brought back Master Roshi, and added Krillin as a new character. From there, it got popular before I knew it. After this shift, Dragon Ball would explode in popularity, eventually becoming Shonen Jump's premier series. Readers had become invested in Goku's relentless perseverance to become stronger and stronger as he faced increasingly imposing foes. This newfound popularity eventually leading to an anime adaption of its own. Dragon Ball would go on to completely eclipse Dr. Slump in terms of sheer popularity and influence. And this would all come to a head when the series would shift from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z. No longer was the anime popular only in Japan, but now the world. In a way, almost transcending anime in general and becoming a phenomenon. It was now a touchstone of popular media worldwide, creating unforgettable iconic moments and reshaping anime and manga as people knew it. Dragon Ball would become the template by which some of the biggest series would be formed, and to a degree, still are today. One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, from the beginning, it all started with Dragon Ball, a series that would carve an unforgettable legacy. However, just like Dr. Slump, Dragon Ball eventually had to end. Dragon Ball would end its run in Shonen Jump on August 4th, 1995. And for anyone witnessing Dragon Ball's meteoric rise to popularity, it's easy to ask, well, why? This is quite possibly the most popular manga ever written. How could you end it when you're on top of the world? And this was for a few reasons. For one, Akira Toriyama had been writing Dragon Ball for a little over a decade at this point. And in that time, well, people change. He had a wife and kids now that he wanted to spend time with. And along with this, it also meant that he would get to work on other things. Dragon Ball continued on with GT, though Toriyama's involvement in its production was much more hands-off. Instead, he focused his time doing what he did before he was a world-renowned manga author, creating one-shot stories that, while not as popular as something like Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball, allowed him to create something new. Though, despite how much he tried, he could never fully move on from Dragon Ball. 
In the mid-2010s, Toriyama would write the stories for Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods and Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F, both of these eventually culminating in a brand new series, Dragon Ball Super, Toriyama's official follow-up to Dragon Ball Z. And people have their opinions on Super. Some love it, others don't. But what was clear was that Toriyama had sparked a new passion in the series that he had clearly lost. Working on tons of new Dragon Ball projects, life had been renewed in the Dragon Ball series. Which is why this next part is hard to talk about. On March 8th, 2024, just a week ago at the time of this video, the official Dragon Ball Twitter account put out a statement stating that Akira Toriyama had died of an acute subdural hematoma at the age of 68. And needless to say, this shook the world. After his death, fans from all across the globe would mourn the loss of one of the most influential creators in the entire industry. Manga authors who had been influenced by his work would honor his immense influence and express their sadness. Akira Toriyama was gone. I think if there's anything to be taken from this video, it's not that Akira Toriyama was some kind of prodigy, because he wasn't. When he first started working on manga, he failed horribly, but that didn't stop him. He just kept going, and he just got better and better until he eventually changed the world. And I think that's why so many people love Dragon Ball. Because at the end of the day, it's not just Goku's story. It's everyone's story. If you believe that you can do something, don't give up. Keep working at it. And even if you fail, that only means you're going to be that much stronger when you try again. And just like Akira Toriyama, we can all change the world. We just have to believe that we can.